Welcome back to another episode of Ads for Lunch, the show where real advertising professionals tell you about ads they really like. And today we're talking about the Super Bowl. It's when people who aren't in advertising talk about advertising. And we all get a teeny little peek into the reality where, unless you live in Tampa or Kansas City, the commercials are the best part. So joining me today are three brave souls who are betting their lunch on some super ads. Say hello to Beth Thompson, Julie Allard. Hey guys. And special guest from across the pond, Nikki Smith, who comes to us from one of our Amen partner agencies called Thinking Juice. Um, Nikki, it says in my notes here that you've actually been to over 15 Super Bowls. Is that correct? Absolutely. I'm a diehard Super Bowl fan. Every year I'm flying over. It's just a shame this year's the only one that I'm not doing. What a bummer. All right, so so let's get to it, guys. Beth, I'm going to ask you to go first. Tell us, what are you betting your lunch on? All right, I'm going to hit you with a little nostalgia from back in the 80s. Um, we have an exciting spot from Uber Eats, and they are a first-time contender to the Super Bowl. Um, I was actually a little surprised to see that they released their full spot. What initially had captured my interest was a teaser spot for the spot that's going to be uh, shared at the big game. And you're going to see a few familiar faces that I think are going to make you laugh pretty hard. This local access message is brought to you by Uber Eats. Freeze world! Freeze world! Party time! Excellent! <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to Wayne's World. Party on Wayne. Party on Garth. As a local access show, we want everyone to support local restaurants. But we'd never manipulate you the way all these other commercials do. Oh God. Sha, sure, that's really sad. Totally. We're better than that. Yeah, we'd never shamelessly rely on a celebrity cameo. Right, Cardi B? Yeah, eat local. <laughs> or jump on the latest trend. Eat local. 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 <sighs> All right. Local eats. Wings world. Yummy time. Excellent. <laughs> so I thought that was really fun. I love that it hits on the nostalgia. Um, love that they got the band back together. Garth and Wayne, and I think nostalgia matched with humor, and of course, a celebrity, a surprise celebrity endorsement um, really make memorable spots for the Super Bowl. Another kind of big, um, you know, key trait that I think makes uh, Super Bowl spots memorable are when they pull on the heartstrings. Unfortunately, th this one was really focused on, on humor, um, but I, th I think it was hilarious, and I think a lot of people will be talking about this during the game. Mm. Very cool. Um... Nikki, I'll, I'll pass to you next. Do I guess first question, do you guys have Wayne's World uh, across the pond where you are? Everybody knows Wayne's World. We're not living <laughs> in the dark ages. No, it's good. <clears throat> I mean, obviously the funnest thing about this is that they know that it's kind of like a quick win to do a celebrity uh, ad. Uh, so I think it's kind of fun that they've uh, poked fun at themselves because they are kind of known for doing it as well. Um, and to especially, you know, as you say, bring, bring back a bit of nostalgia. Everybody's into that at the moment. And then you've got Cardi, who just loves doing an endorsement anyway. So it's all good. Yeah. And it also hit on some of the challenges, I think, um, for COVID. So a lot of advertisers, again, pulled out this. This one is a new a new contender and um, just taps into kind of the world that we're living in right now, which is delivery of food by your doorstep. Um, that social distancing as a result of COVID. So very appropriate uh, for the now. Very cool. Julie, what was your take on that one? You know, I, I enjoyed that one. I, I didn't pull it out as my favorite, but you know what I did love it was the twist with Cardi B. And I thought that she was a really good sport. Um, and funny to do kind of the back and forth. And, you know, I, I found a few kind of Easter eggy things that, you know, may, maybe ad people would look at and be like, that's really funny, or that that's sort of a nod to, to sort of this is kind of a, 
the the ultimate sort of prize for for ad people to get their their spot on there and and to, to have a little fun with it it's you know there's a category of spots i kind of call it like the, the cannonball run of spots and that may be an old reference but it, it's basically when you get your friends together and you just make something really fun um and that shows the joy of making something like that shows through and i think that this spot definitely hits on that very cool yeah my favorite part uh, was the beginning the camera guy like the, the dude holding the camera who's got like the long scraggly hair and the cutoffs like that's the exact same guy like you, you don't see his face I promise you that is the exact same guy so yeah that was a win it just you know the fun of looking back at of course Wayne and Garth but like the blanket on the couch and all the little details and the steps and the apartment so yeah I mean i would be curious to know how much of that is practical how much of that is a lift you know digitally but uh, man, yeah, it looked cool, and it, I think it showed how timeless they are too. With um, you know some of their classic Wayne and Garthisms, and then you know here, here's where we are today in the, in the Cardi B, you know, the latest TikTok thing. So yeah, that was a really strong entry way to kick us off for this Super Bowl <laughs> edition. That was terrible, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it rolling. So um, Julie, do you want to go next? What uh, what did you bring to the table today? Sure, I, you know I also went in the humor category. And I think that that's gonna be a, a strong play this year, as Beth mentioned. Uh, people are looking for you know, how they can navigate these you know, continuous landscape that we're in, the COVID, you know, what's happening with our country, that type of thing. I, I think like people are ready for some humor. They're ready to laugh. Um, so what I picked in that category is, it, it's, it's, a, it's an outlier, I'll give it that. Uh, it is Dr. Squatch, and you might say, who is that? But that's the point, right? It, it, it's sometime in the Super Bowl, you get that wild card. You're like, what is that? Who is that? But you know, they use those platforms to make a big splash. And the spot co is called, you're not a dish. <laughs> your soap is <laughs> ugh. And your body wash is a synthetic detergent. But you're not a dish. You're a man. Switch to Dr. Squatch Natural Soap for Men. For men who build things. Open pickle jars on the first try. Slay dragons and let their daughters braid their hair. Men who like to feel good and smell titillating. Dr. Squatch takes you places you never thought you'd go. Naked. Dang. So Man, there, there's was... a lot that they packed into that. Yeah. That flew by. I had to watch the timestamp. I thought that was a 15 because it was just like nonstop the whole time. There, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the Dollar Shave Club yeah. as well. It's very kind of like just fast and dirty in for a soap, but good. Yeah, I think everybody's been trying to replicate that formula. You know, I think that Dollar Shave guy kind of broke the mold where he's like, you know what? I just want to talk. I'm going to have psych gags. So it's definitely built off. You, you know, that was probably presented that way. They're like, you know Dollar Shave Club? Yeah. This time it's going to be in the woods and there's going to yeah. be a Sasquatch. But it's amazing as well that it was obviously, it's like such low production value, but it still made such an impression. And it probably because they went the complete opposite end of the spectrum that it stands out so much that it just, it's just a clever, funny idea and it can be that simple. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and what I love is, is sometimes the Super Bowl is a festival of celebrity. Um, and I think there's a place for that, but sometimes when there's so many of it, it sort of competes against like itself of like which celebrity you like and what's, what's kind of your taste in that. Um, where this is like devoid of celebrities, I, you know, Nikki, as you said, a low budget, it, you know, it was made by kind of an indie shop out in, in uh, San Diego so that, you know, not a big kind of holding company behind it, but just, just independence kind of out there making kind of a name for Dr. Squat. Um, but what I also love about it too is it's, you know, it, it does sort of hit upon like, oh, it's the manly men, sort of like the regular things you see, but, you know, but there's also like, and the and daughters braiding our hair, you know, so I, I think that they kind of touch on sort of that spectrum of, of what it is and, and try not to, you know, to expand out from being so stereotypical to kind of bringing in some of those sensitivities and things that, you know, that makes a, a well-rounded person, I should say, that may want to use this soap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely got Old Spice vibes and, um, beef jerky vibes as well for, for the spots, just the, the manly man. But it's just interesting to think about, you know, we talked a little bit about um, Uber Eats coming on for the first time. This brand I'm not familiar with and just 
making a tremendous leap on the biggest advertising platform of the year. And it makes you wonder like, how did they make that decision to like hit go? And it's pretty, pretty brave, I think. So um, nice move, I think for, for, for them. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking at their logo. I have it parked on my uh, my other screen here. And it looks like it was made in Microsoft Paint, which I love like that. Again, at the time where this is when you have, you know, Hollywood special effects people on your commercials, you have celebrities, you have every, uh, you know, spared no expense everywhere. But but like the star prop in this was a jar of pickles and like, you know, my daughter's hair braid. So yeah, I got to give them some props to that where they're like, you know what? A disproportionate amount of the budget probably went to the media placement, <laughs> but you know they didn't let that stop them. And they're like, "Look, we're going to make some hay with these really, you know, relatable but um, you know low footprint props where um, you know you can make a moment out of anything." So I, I got to give them to that or give that to them. And then um, yeah, take another look at that logo. It is it is nice, but again, it, like it gets the it's the transparency of. We're not, we're not investing a bazillion dollars in a new Pepsi logo. We're investing in the product. That's the benefit of a direct-to-consumer brand. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's kind of a win and that's probably intentional. I hope it's intentional. I know, I know how to open a jar every single time. Even if it's tough, you just gotta stab the top with a knife. It'll oh, open, okay. it releases pressure. So life lessons as well, <laughs> not just advertising. Noted, all right. Um, <laughs> So Nikki, what is, uh, what is your entry for uh, ads for lunch today? I know, right. Well, I guess um, we, we spoke about this before, but I kind of had a bit of a, a tick list in my brain before I started trying to choose my ad. So I kind of wanted something that um, didn't feel very worthy. I think, you know, there were, a, there's one ad spot in particular where it's kind of look at us, look how good we are and look how generous we are. So I didn't want any of that. Um, I didn't actually want, again, the well-trodden route of using a celebrity. I felt like that was too much of a quick win. Um, so I kind of chose my ad because it did neither of the above. Uh, but mainly, as we spoke about, it kind of fit into the category of fun, which I think, as we've all said, works because it's what we all need right now. We need a bit of escape, especially for, you know, setting the tone for something like the Super Bowl. I feel like it's a, a bit of escapism for everybody. So I wanted to look for an ad that kind of maintained that escapism. Um, and mainly, actually, this one stood out for me because it managed to address the obvious uh, without making me feel depressed at all. So uh, I also think that they, they spoke about the subject in a way that felt very on brand and very right for the product as well. So my choice is the Bud Light Salsa Lemonade Spot. Okay, very cool. Let's take a look. When did Bud Light Seltzer start making lemonade? Probably when 2020 handed us all those lemons. 2020 was a lemon of a year. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> January, February, into March and April. Same way through. Every single second, every minute, every hour. All the whole year through. It is intense right here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Has a lot of lemons. Well, you know what they say when life gives you we lemons. We know the saying, Mark. New Bud Light Seltzer Lemonade, packed with lemonade flavor after a lemon of a year. Yeah, so I guess that it's kind of the opposite of Julie's in that I kind of went for high production because to me it looked like a classic ad in every sense and I, I loved watching it. Like visually, I thought it was like a fantastic and it really made an impression on me. Um, but also, you know, from a from a like a planner's perspective, you know, to me, you know, it doesn't make sense for Bud a beer to start dealing in this kind of product. So it was a bit out there and a bit weird. So to focus on the weirdness of everything and the surrealism of everything kind of made it make sense. Like why wouldn't Bud release this now? Because nothing makes sense anymore. So it managed to kind of get the product and fit into the 
the situation perfectly. And then, you know, it's just a feel good ad. It managed to talk about COVID and the hideousness of 2020 without making me feel massively depressed or kind of trivial trivializing it in any kind of way at all. Um, I guess as well, I was really looking for an ad that didn't make me wince or like didn't make me do any eye rolling. And this one just kind of cut through everything and just focused on selling its product in a really fun, light and refreshing way, which I guess is a really great reflection on the brand as well. Bud Light is definitely a brand that wants to be seen as refreshing and a bit irreverent and, you know, having some sense of humor. So to me, it just was a perfect brand fit and a perfect reflection of the product and was just a really nice piece of uh, classic escapism as well. Very cool. I love it. Yeah, Beth, what, I was gonna ask, what do you think on that one? Oh, I thought it was great. I did wince though, however, when the guy was like looking up and the lemon jabbed him right in the throat. That had to be painful. It makes you wonder like what props they had to use and how much um, they had to pay their talent to get pelted yeah. with lemons. <laughs> But um, very, very interesting. And then also just kind of thinking about um, the Anheuser companies, Budweiser pulling out, but you know, Anheuser is still having a huge presence specifically with yeah. this. And I, I agree with you. I think it hit on you know, all the attributes of the brand, light, fresh, and fun. Um, I kind of want to buy that to drink during <laughs> the game on Sunday. So I thought it was, I thought it was really cool and um, definitely a good summary of the year of 2020 for sure. How about you, Julie? Yeah, first of all, I, I've got to give a shout out performance wise to the, the lady who's driving the bus because like she's my fave in that. It's like speed, <laughs> isn't it? It reminded me of speed or something. <laughs> so I just yeah. love her. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, you're right, Beth. They have to make a splash, like in, in this market. Like they're they're not the first to the market. They have to be relevant in a way. Um, you know, there's a lot of, of of smaller companies sort of owning that seltzer space. Um, and and how do they how do they go in that in a in a big way? So I, I thought that was a, a smart play on their part. Um, I, I do want to ask Mark how he feels about the the line at the end. Like, yeah, yeah, Mark, we get it. Like, you know. <laughs> that they work with named Mark that they're like that's the joke around <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna have to check the credits to see if I know anybody because that I, yeah that one hit home I was like oh man <laughs> they know me um yeah. yeah my my take on that was like for all the young creatives out there who are wondering like one of the things I picked up early in the biz is that you have to write yourself a playground so you know the, the team on this one said what if lemons literally fall out of the sky and then that's your playground. So then all of a sudden you, you have license to do the bride crying under the table. You have license to do the bus driver. You have license to do the guy at the airport and like all of the ripple effects of that playground that you, you know, you create with yourself. So um, just want to like throw that out there is like, that's, that's kind of the beauty of the Super Bowl is if you did this any other time of the year, the commercial would be this big, but because the Super Bowl, it gets to be this big and you can do anything in anywhere. So uh, I mean, you can have a cameo by the Los Angeles Dodgers. I mean, that was pretty cool. I got to give it to him on that. Um, so yeah, that was another really good entry. And I think it's a really good counterpoint to the Dr. Squatch where like they're both visually jam packed, but you know, one, one I'd love to see like the, the production spend on this. I, I bet one is easily mm -hmm. five or six or maybe seven or eight times the other. So. Um, yeah, it just goes to show though, isn't it? It's just the, sometimes the big idea is just enough like it isn't necessarily always down to how big your production budget is you can make as much as a, of an impression if you just come up with something that's really really smart mm -hmm. so nick yeah, them, i'll go oh, ahead sorry. i was just gonna say um i give them props too for product innovation so i said in the world of pr and social and from a social listening perspective it makes you wonder are people like craving a little bit of a different twist on on um, the seltzers, Julie, you mentioned kind of the mass market. So to, to be able to come up with a new product and do it in a fun way, I think was really cool too. So Nikki, I was gonna ask you, we talked a little bit about the ripple effect of Super Bowl commercials. Do, 
do these hit people's radar? And again, I'm going to ask you to speak for everybody outside of the United States. So, you know, apologize for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no big deal. Um, I guess there's always those cult ads that people start talking a lot about on social. Uh, so they become more visible. Obviously, working in the industry, everybody keeps an eye on everything. Um, there are some that kind of permeate into our culture as well. It's mainly... It's mainly the big ones. It is usually the celebrity focused ones because everybody wants to see their celebrity favorite doing something silly and ridiculous, which is what usually happens with the Super Bowl ads. So, uh, but it's definitely, um, it's not as tracked as much. It's after, it's the after effect. It's the ones that got all the press or word of mouth, more, more so word of mouth than anything else. Very cool. Well, if you follow Gatesman Agency on any of our social media, you know that we've come to the part of the show where uh, I get to pick a winner based on, you know, no science, no data, just just kind of a gut feeling. And um, definitely some great entries today. So again, I'll say thanks to, to everybody for you know, betting your lunch on some ads. So, so we had Wayne's World, we had Dr. Squatch, and we had the, the Bud Light seltzer, all the lemonades. And... And they're all really good, right? Like it's hard to pick a winner out of that group. Um, I, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to Bud Light Seltzer because um, I think I think it's like the most classic sort of Super Bowl spot. But like they did it in a way that was just um, it was just so fun to watch, right? Like it's it's what I expect in a Super Bowl ad. And um, you know, again, this comes with the massive prize, Nikki, of, of you know. I was going to say, their how are we going to do this? Are you going to send me some money through the post? Or yeah. are you going to do an Uber Eats? We have <laughs> Uber Eats. It's fine. You can do me an Uber Eats. There you go. Unless you're Venmo. Do you have Venmo? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if we have Venmo. I should probably know that. I don't have Venmo anyway. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again, everybody, for you know joining along. Uh, virtually and then uh, for getting together Nikki thank you for making the trip if you want us to reimburse your parking we can do that just uh you know, see them at the front that. desk <laughs> <laughs> but until next time we will see everybody else on the next episode of ads for lunch thanks everybody congrats Nikki Woo. bye bye